Greetings. My last video about the Watch Technology Institute ended with a description of our first class project, which was making aluminum nameplates using hand files and a jeweler saw. Uh, from that video until today, it's been all mechanical work, including learning to use a lathe, grinders, and polishers. The next project was machining a 10 millimeter square brass cube and applying different finishes on each side, six finishes total. Uh, this was using files, hand files, and an India stone. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed applying the finishes. Uh, to date, I've been more interested in movements than in dials and hands. Uh, but you know what? Learning uh, to perfect different kinds of dial and plate finishes could be a lot of fun. But half of my finishes didn't pass muster, uh, so I earned a 50 out of 100 grade for it. Now I'm making another one uh, after class hours in order to raise my grade. I've been working after hours to also redo my steel squares project. Uh, I'm a little over halfway done, and so far my results are much improved over my first submission. I think I have about five hours to go before I can submit them again for grading. And the next assignment after that was making a holder for Horia attachments out of a brass block. Uh, the indented angles that you see at the top and bottom have no function other than to torture the students. They succeeded. Uh, this was made, again, using hand files, uh, but also a drill press for the holes. I was sure I blew this project, but I was stunned to see I scored an 88, which is the highest grade I've gotten on any project to date. The class then switched to learning how to use a workbench lathe. Now, anytime I've seen a photo of a lathe, uh, you know, my eyes have just glazed over. I've just seen a jumble of parts without any idea of what each part does. Uh, well, I've gotten very familiar with it in the past four weeks. The first order of business for the class was to polish and sharpen our gravers. They were brand new, but we had to polish the sides and sharpen and polish the front face. This is what I did for a day and a half to do the polishing. Moving my hand on the graver over an India stone. A day and a half for three gravers. For the faces, we first ground them by hand uh, and then we used a dedicated uh, polishing machine. Uh, the manufacturer's GRS. I don't know what this machine is called. It's a flat disc, uh, horizontal that rotates and that's all there is to it. Then we disassembled, cleaned, lubed, and reassembled our lathes. And we learned about cutting angles, uh, the ins and outs of them, and how the gravers did their job. The T-rest attachment is a ledge on which you perch your graver. Using it, we made a simple tower out of brass. It kind of looks like an audio plug. Now, my end result was pretty good but I needed to eight bad ones, only five are shown here, before I succeeded. Many students in the class did it correctly on the second or third attempt. Then we made a brass horia anvil and pusher. We learned to use the tailstock on the lathe for drilling. Uh, instead of the drill bit moving, the drill bit is stationary and you push the drill bit that's not moving into the piece which is rotating. It's same as drilling, but it's sort of backwards. Anyway, setting it up was surprisingly complicated. Uh, the end result was good, but I needed, again, to kill a few prototypes, uh, more than I think I should have before I succeeded. We used a grinding wheel uh, to make an end cutter and a single point cutter. You know, I had never touched a grinder before. The single point cutter was great, but I wound up killing it when I reused scrap metal for a project and the scrap had a broken off drill bit embedded within. Uh, in our one of our supply rooms, there are draws for new stock for brass bars, brass rods, steel rods, and then there's also a draw for, well, it's labeled scrap metal, which, is, which are the, the parts left over from other students' projects, and rather than just throwing them out and going to waste, they get tossed in here, they're different lengths, and they're all a jumble, and they're all mixed up, and it's a way to you know, make use of basically scrap parts rather than just throw them out, which is fine, it's totally sensible. Now why someone would put a rod, a section of a rod, containing an embedded drill bit in the scrap draw is kind of beyond me, 
but I should have noticed the danger before I let it trash my cutter. So I had to make a new one. Uh, on this one, I got a bit impatient, which has been a constant problem for me. And I let the temperature get a little too high during the grind. That's why you see some of the metal is brown there. Uh, I hope I didn't temper it. I don't think I did. Uh, then it was time to disassemble, clean, and reassemble our cross slide attachments for our lathes. Uh, calibrating the x-axis was a challenge because its scale wasn't commensurate with the magnitude of the change we made on each, each iteration. Um, to adjust the x-axis, we had to just move the platform that holds the graver just a tiny, tiny bit, and the dial that goes from minus 30 to positive 30 degrees was just gigantic compared to the little change that we had to make. Uh, but we got through it. Now, through all of this, I've broken two collets, <laughs> just blew them up, and I've chewed up a graver five or six times. Uh, and by the way, here's what my bench looks like after an afternoon of lathe turning. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, well, we made an acrylic stick tool, um, you know, something to hold down uh, a part when you're working on a movement that has a, you know, a flat kind of screwdriver-like end and then a, a pointy end. And we made that out of an acrylic. That was fun on the, on the lathe. And we made a prick punch, which is like a hole punch, except it's got a tighter angle at the end. And then we hardened and tempered it. Um, I learned how to use a knurler on a larger uh, leaven lathe. Uh, to make a knurled section on the punch, and that was fun. Today, bringing you up to date, I am making a pair of steel Horia anvil pusher pairs, which is a bit more realistic than a brass anvil pusher pair. I'm going to heat treat them and then polish their surfaces, and then I'll get graded on it. Uh, and I also have to redo one of my brass conical towers and then get back to my steel squares and my 10 millimeter cube do-over. To give you an idea of how many dead versions of projects I generate before succeeding, uh, here are some completed projects. My grades on them weren't necessarily great, but they were at least completed. Now here's some, not all, of the dead versions, the prototypes of these projects. I didn't start keeping these from the very beginning. So to this collection, add about 30 more botched pieces to what you see here. And you'll have an idea of the swath of destruction uh, I have to go through to finish my projects. So what goes wrong during a project? Well, I'll get a project almost all done. On the final turning, I'll take one more swipe or one larger swipe with the graver than I should um, and I wind up blowing past the allowed tolerance for the very last section that I'm working on. Uh, why do I do this? Why aren't I more careful? I don't know. On my first projects, I positioned the T-rest too far away from the work, and the graver got sucked under the piece and then marred the surface. Or I wasn't holding the graver at the right uh, you know, um, height and um, caused bad things to happen. Or I started with raw stock uh, that wasn't sufficiently long to account for what I needed to do. Say we were working on something that was supposed to be 20 millimeters long and uh, you know I had a piece of stock that was 22 millimeters long and I said yeah that'll be long enough. No it isn't. After all the work that had to be done and after one start that I had to restart at the very beginning of my work you know I, I didn't have enough stock to complete the, the, the project. Um, or I trusted the lathe's X and Z dials too much. They have um, a maximum uh, tolerance resolution to them, and uh, there's some also some um, backlash in them because there are gears that have to mesh, and as you move a dial forward or backward, you know, you have some, some backlash as there's some slop between the gear teeth. And when you trust that too much, you wind up making something that's too big or too little. Uh, this past week, I had a fun thing happen. I was working on something. I was doing really well. It was up to the very last uh, turn that I had to make, which was to shorten the piece up to the right length. And I had a lot of material to remove um, because I had used a piece of scrap and, you know, this thing was this long and I was making something this long. Well, so instead of slowly but safely slicing down the piece with the lathe, 
I took it out and I went over to the back, uh, back classroom uh, table and I used a hacksaw because of course I can cut through a lot of material faster with a hacksaw than slicing off one tenth of a millimeter at a time. <clears throat> well, you know what happened. I didn't control the hacksaw super well and it wound up making a diagonal cut that violated the length tolerance of the piece. And so all my work was a loss. And I've made other rookie mistakes. Some days are okay, and other days are, uh, shall we say, not exactly uplifting. And I've been stressing out about this. At the end of my first four weeks, my course average was a 69. I am not kidding. I was a D student at the end of week four. Today, uh, due to better grades on subsequent projects and on homeworks uh, and on our mid-quarter quiz, uh, today my average is a 77. Uh, so I'm a C student, yay team. My goal uh, is to be a B student by the quarter's end, which is still really terrible. Um, but there's not much I can do about it. I wish I was faster in uh, becoming proficient uh, on these mechanical projects. Um, and I wish I was more savvy uh, and um, more, um, I don't know, in touch, in tune, whatever, with the lathe, but it's taken me a while to come up to speed on it. Some days uh, are extremely discouraging, like I wonder what exactly am I doing here? Uh, but that passes quickly and I just continue digging in and working forward. Uh, one last thing, I've set the wheels in motion to become a lab assistant for the class. Uh, after that happens, um, I'll be able to more easily use the lab during off hours. And that's all I have for you today. Until next time, take care.